Hello and welcome to Weather on the Go. Hope everybody's having a great Thursday out there here this morning. And let's kind of get into this video here very quickly because there's a lot to talk about here this morning. We do have a lot of severe weather that happened yesterday. Also looking ahead here at some uh, severe weather as we head into this afternoon and even Friday. And then here looking ahead also at a major heat wave that is still on track toward the middle of June, including the Father's Day weekend. And then looking ahead at some here climatology with the tropics and the tropics starting to potentially heat heat up as we head toward the end of June. So welcome back everybody. Hope everybody's having a great Thursday morning out there. A lot of severe weather reports across portions here of the United States, especially from the Ohio Valley down into the southeast and into the southern plains. Wind reports here, 147 of those with four of those significant, 28 tail reports with four of those significant, even two tornado reports here across southwestern Ohio where a couple of tornadoes did touch down and were confirmed, at least by radar, as we uh, as we kind of concluded Wednesday. Well, but we did also have 177 total severe weather reports for another busy day that did here uh, transpire on your Wednesday. Looking ahead here, we do have uh, kind of an active pattern, and that has been the case across much of the country in the past several weeks and even the past several months. And this is kind of a summary of how many severe thunderstorm watches there were across the country here from the northern plains, the central and southern plains, getting over to the Ohio Valley here the last, you know, several months back to the springtime. And you can see where the severe weather has really been concentrated here uh, the past few months across portions here of the central plains, down into portions here of Texas and Oklahoma and the southern plains as well. Even a little spot up here into the northeast here as well has been pretty active. And then as you look with all the tornado warning or uh, the tornado watches you can see that's been pretty active across the Dixie Alley area down through the southeast and even up into the portions of the upper Midwest and especially the northern plains as well the past few months. But as we head into this afternoon, we are seeing another slight risk of severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center did hear uh, update here on this day one outlook. Still maintaining a slight risk across Kansas, south central Nebraska, getting down into much of Oklahoma, northern Texas Panhandle, back into far eastern Colorado and northeastern portions there in New Mexico as well, and then getting down down toward the Mid-South. Also along the Gulf Coast, the, the, the portions of the Southeast Coast here from the Eastern Carolinas down through the Florida Panhandle here, are seeing here a marginal risk for some severe weather as we head through the day today as well. Even a small marginal risk up into portions here of uh, you know Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island uh, here as we head into the afternoon as well. In that slight risk area, we can expect here 15% and also a significant here hatched wind risk across these areas as an MCS complex will develop across the central plains into southern Nebraska and start to dive south and eastward here and propagate southeast as we head through the, uh, especially the evening hours here into the overnight hours here on Thursday. Uh, today with wind gusts that could be over 75 miles per hour here in this black outlined here hatched wind risk area in that 15 percent zone from Kansas down into portions here of Oklahoma and then back here into portions of the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma and into southeastern Colorado as well. And then looking ahead, we do have another 15% and even a hatched hail risk across south central Nebraska into north central and northwestern portions there of uh, Kansas. We do, could have two inch or larger hailstones here with the initial storms that developed today across those areas. So do want to be on guard for that as some supercells could put down some large hail in those similar zones that did see baseball size hail just a couple days ago. And even in that same zone as well, a two percent, a two percent tornado risk with an isolated tornado or two possible. The initial, the initial storms that develop across central portions there of Nebraska, getting down to north central and northwestern Kansas as we head into this afternoon and evening. And looking ahead at kind of the setup with us today, we do have a lot of moisture kind of pooling up to the north here, kind of pulling up from the western and central Gulf of Mexico. We got dew points here to the north into portions here of Nebraska, a little lower, but still supporting severe weather with mid 50 dew points. Farther to the south, we have dew points in the upper 50s, low 60s, and then down toward the Red River here in portions of southern Oklahoma, north, northern and northeast Texas, dew points here in the lower 70s. So a lot of juice for these storms as they dive to the south and east with time here as we head to the evening and overnight tonight. So kind of looking at this, this is kind of a different model that I, than I normally use. 
I think this one depicts uh, the kind of the complex of storms the best here across that slight risk area here as we head into this into this afternoon, this evening, and into the overnight hours, and into early Friday across the Mid-South here as well. So this is the GDPS model here. I don't normally look at this, but I do uh, kind of like the way it's kind of simulating the radar, how it could look later today, so I'll show you that now. We got some storms starting to pop up as we head into late this afternoon across portions of Nebraska, even down here in the portions of New Mexico and Colorado. And these will start to really develop across Kansas, southern Nebraska, into portions of the Texas Panhandle, into the Oklahoma Panhandle as we head into the overnight or into the evening hours, rather. And then this will really start to grow upscale into a big old MCS or mesoscale convective system type of complex and really dive down to the southeast. I don't think there's going to be a derecho with this system here at all. There's no indication of that. That, but we do could have some intense wind gusts here along the leading edge of this system as it pushes to the south and east and really amplifying in, in intensity as it pushes into northeastern Oklahoma and southeastern Kansas here as we head into the early Friday morning hours. So do watch out if you live down toward the Tulsa area, even Oklahoma City proper, do want to watch out for some very strong storms with some hail, some very strong damaging winds, potentially over 75 miles per hour, and even that chance of a tornado, although the tornado threat will be waning as we head into the early Friday morning hours. And this will be a continuation on Friday. The Storm Prediction Center's Day 2 outlook shows a slight risk across the Mid-South from portions of Arkansas, down and through eastern and northern portions there of Louisiana, much of Mississippi, and getting down to southwestern Alabama. Do want to watch out for some severe weather there as well, as we could have some intense wind gusts potentially. Maybe even an upgrade here to an enhanced risk. We'll have to see how this works as it heads into Friday, because Got a lot of juice to work with, dew points well into the 70s across Louisiana, eastern Texas, and then kind of some 60 degree dew points across the Jackson, Mississippi area, getting up toward Little Rock here. So do want to watch out for that here. Kind of that gradient where those dew points go from 60s to mid 70s is where that MCS or mesoscale convective system complex will here track and propagate to the south and east. So as we head into the afternoon tomorrow, or on, on a Friday here, you can see this complex will start to dive to the south and east through the uh, portions here of Arkansas and really start to move down here to the south. But it may start to weaken as we head into late Friday afternoon and into Friday evening here across Mississippi around the Jackson area and then start to weaken even more here as it encounters portions here of the southern Gulf Coast as we head into the evening hours on Friday. But just in the next two days, we can be expecting a couple inches of rainfall here from portions of Kansas down through northeastern uh, Oklahoma into the Arkansas area, portions here of eastern, northeastern Louisiana, down through central and southern portions there of Mississippi, southwestern portions of Alabama, maybe upwards of an inch to an inch and a half of rainfall can be expected locally across those areas as well. Also, a very active pattern continuing across the Pacific Northwest where several more inches of rain, upwards of three inches are possible from portions of Portland up through Seattle and even into portions of far southwestern British Columbia as as well. So a very active pattern continuing across the Pacific Northwest with what has been a relentless rainy pattern across those areas here for the past several weeks across, and really even several days across that region here. So that will continue. Also here to, uh, today, the Storm Prediction Center has put out a kind of an outlook of some isolated drier type thunderstorms with that ongoing drought across the Four Corners region. Uh, we could have some isolated dry thunderstorms, so we do want to watch out for kind of a fire weather risk across these areas into far southern Colorado, New Mexico, into eastern and southeastern Arizona here as well. And that will really continue as we head into the day on Friday here, kind of in the same zones from southeastern and eastern Arizona into central and southern portions there of of, uh, New Mexico with some isolated dry type thunderstorms in those drought stricken areas. So do want to be mindful of that. Any lightning strike could really start a fire across those areas here today and into our Friday. So that will be something to watch as well. And that will also really be the kind of the story of it all as well, as this heat will really start to amplify as we head towards, you know, this weekend into early next week. A major heat wave that here is starting to build across portions of the desert southwest and the southern plains across west Texas. And this will start to only expand to the east and amplify even further as we head toward the day on Sunday. And really, as we get into Monday, this will start inching its way over toward the Missouri Valley, up through portions of the northern plains, with some very high temperature anomalies showing up across 
across portions of New Mexico, Colorado, even into the central and southern plains. And this will continue here on Tuesday, maybe trying to break down just a little bit on its northern edge across the northern plains with a system possibly developing across southwestern Canada. But still, this will here this warmth will continue to expand eastward into portions here of the mid-Mississippi Valley, the eastern two-thirds of the country here as we head towards uh, the early to middle portion here of next week. Also with that ridge building here as we head toward the middle of next week, we got the jet stream starting to push well up to the north. Upper level jet here with an active storm track will continue across the Pacific Northwest, getting in through here the portions of the northern plains and then up through the here Great Lakes region and then diving down here into the northeast. And underneath that ridge, not a lot of uh, you know lift, not a lot of upward motion, a lot of sinking air. So you're not going to see any convection. You're just going to see a lot of you know scorching hot temperatures, but maybe even some record breaking temperatures across portions of Texas into the southern plains and the desert southwest as we head into the middle of next week as well. And kind of looking at the middle of next week, kind of that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday type time frame, somewhere in there, especially centered on the Wednesday, June 15th time frame, the GFS has been consistent here the last several runs on putting you know, higher cape or higher convective available potential energy, otherwise known as instability across the portions of the Ohio Valley into the mid-Mississippi Valley and in the portions of the Great Lakes and even down into the Tennessee Valley here portions as we head in towards the middle of next week. And that is concerning as we do have a pretty strong mid-level jet kind of moving in along the northern edge of this ridge. So we could have some ridge riding type of MCS clusters, uh, mesoscale convective system type complexes that revolve around the edge of this here, no, this high pressure, this ridge of high pressure that starts to develop across portions here of the southern and central plains. Also here, kind of seeing that a little bit of a signal of that here on the GFS, seeing maybe some storm activity up into portions here of eastern Iowa, northern Illinois, and potentially over toward lower Michigan. The placement of this is not set in stone, but it does show you the general picture that the active storm track will be across southern portions of Canada and then across the Great Lakes into the northeast as we head toward that Wednesday time frame with the outer edge of that ridge here feeding into all that instability. We could also have here, you know, some stronger storms down through the Ohio Valley as we head toward late next week and toward the Father's Day weekend. And that is you're kind of reflected on the Climate Prediction Center's 8 to 14 day temperature outlook through the Father's Day weekend here and possibly even a few days beyond that ridge will really start to here amplify. We'll have the first ridge start to break down, but then the secondary ridge will start to reestablish itself across the central and southern plains. And with the trough across portions of the Pacific Northwest, I do expect continued rainy conditions across those areas, unfortunately, as we head through portions of Portland, up through here portions of Seattle, maybe even up into southwestern Canada as well, across the British Columbia area, as we head here toward the Father's Day weekend and toward that week after Father's Day as well, with above normal precipitation expected across the Pacific Northwest, even the monsoon season really starting to get underway across portions here of Arizona into the Four Corners region and really across here the Father's Day weekend and then underneath that ridge below normal precipitation can be likely if not expected especially across the deep south into the mid-south and Tennessee Valley as we head towards the June 16th through June 22nd time frame. And really kind of showing you what this monsoon type of setup is looking like. The 18Z GFS doing a good job of kind of showing this here as the Climate Prediction Center is showing above normal precipitation likely across the four corners. As we head into Wednesday evening next week here, uh, we and toward the middle of next week, we are seeing some rainfall, maybe some thunderstorms developing across New Mexico and Arizona. And this will really start to kind of move its way to the north into Utah and portions here of Colorado around the Denver area, and then getting back through portions here near in Phoenix, maybe eastern portions there of Arizona near the Flagstaff area and then getting back here over toward the Albuquerque area as well into New Mexico and this will really continue even into the Father's Day weekend here with some you know some heavier downpours some occasional cloud to ground lightning here and then maybe even here some smaller hail with some of these storms as well so that will be something to watch but generally here all the way through the uh, Father's Day itself can you know can expect with that monsoon starting to heat up across portions of the Four Corners region you can be expecting a half inch maybe 
upwards of an inch of rainfall potentially across portions, especially of eastern uh, eastern Arizona, eastern and southeastern portions there, Utah, and much of Colorado, and especially down into portions there of New Mexico here around the Albuquerque area can be expecting some decent rainfall around this area here. This model might be a little conservative. We might see a lot heavier rainfall than this model does show as the monsoons do tend to produce some heavier runoff rainfall. So that is something to watch. Now let's turn our attention to the tropics here. This is kind of a little bit of climatology with the tropics here from the July 11th through the 20th time frame. This is kind of where the storms start to originate here as we head into that, you know, the uh, July 11th through uh, 20th time frame. Uh, this is going to, actually, this is the wrong graphic. I'm not, I am very sorry, folks. That is July. Uh, I'll have to fix that in the next one. I'm very sorry. Um, but anyway, the Eastern Pacific uh, Basin, and the hurricane and tropical storm type of uh uh, where you can see the frequency of storms here start to really ramp up toward here the end of uh, end of June and getting into July and into the middle and end of summer across portions of the eastern uh, Pacific Basin with regards to hurricanes and tropical storms really starts to uh, heat up across portions of the eastern Pacific Basin here into portions just west of Mexico uh, as we head into you know the middle and late portion of July and really extending all the way toward fall uh, with hurricanes across those areas here climatologically. Same thing in the Atlantic really starting to kind of heat up a little bit here across you know June July but really the hurricane season really starts to ramp up in the Atlantic uh, the Atlantic basin uh, as we head towards you know the August September and especially into the October time frame with a lot of named storms expected between August and the October November time frame as you get later into the season that is where you get those most named storms so that is something to watch here as well also here, kind of into that June time frame, this is kind of the favorite area of some storms here across just west of Mexico here, south of the Baja of California. Kind of already seen a couple of storms here already, a storm or two. So, uh, you know, this is kind of the favorite area as you head into June, and that kind of extends farther out here into the eastern Pacific Basin as well. Same thing for the Atlantic. A lot of the original here, you know, uh, storm kind of... Uh, you know, storm systems start to kind of originate closer to land in the, you know, the Gulf of Mexico, right along the coast here across portions of the Carolinas, maybe over the Florida area, maybe down in the Bay of Campeche and portions of the Western Caribbean. That is kind of where you can see storms setting up across portions of June, especially as you get towards late June, may start to move a little farther away from land, but still expecting the original kind of storm systems to kind of develop closer to land throughout the June time frame. And this is kind of the CFS model. This is very interesting. As you head toward the middle of June here, toward the Father's Day weekend, the Gulf of Mexico is shut off for business. Not a lot of, you know, storm activity, not a lot of moisture really uh, kind of getting itself together with storm systems. A lot of shear continuing across this area. As we get towards, you know, the end of June, around the Father's Day time frame and beyond, the climate forecasting systems model has been consistent the last few runs of showing well above normal precipitation anomalies across portions of the central and western Gulf into the uh, coastal Texas area and even into portions here of coastal Mexico. And this is definitely concerning as we could have some, you know, some tropical activity starting to brew. I'm not saying there's going to be a large storm with this, but it definitely is something to watch here as the trends are continuing for above average precipitation here, at least for some heavy rainfall here across the coastal Texas area toward the end of June. And that really continues as we head towards, you know, the very end of June and toward that July 4th time frame across portions of Mexico on up through south central Texas, coastal Texas, and maybe coastal Louisiana. So that is something to watch over the next week or two. I do thank you for watching. I know there's a lot to get to with the severe weather, kind of the, uh, the you know, the tropics and, you know, the heat wave that is also coming up here. A lot of record-breaking temperatures, definitely possible. Uh, I do thank you for watching. Do be sure to like my video. Give me a nice thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions below. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'm trying to hit my goal of 200. So please, please help me out. I do appreciate everybody that here joins and tunes in. I am planning on going live here toward the end of June as well. So I'll have to kind of try to get more of an audience in, into my YouTube channel as we head towards, you know, the end of June with me potentially going live for severe weather events and even as the tropics start to heat up as well, kind of tracking those systems as we head toward the end of June. So thank you for watching and hope everybody has a great Thursday out there.